All right, so welcome to our class, the therapeutic class or chair class, which uh, you don't actually have to have a chair, but uh, it is designed so that if um, sitting on the floor is challenging for you, you can do all of the seated postures on a chair. And that's where we are going to start today sitting. So you can get yourself comfortable either on the floor or on a chair, whatever you like. Um, if you're on a chair, I recommend not uh, sort of slumping back into the chair, but finding a nice upright position there. And this week, we're talking about the idea of restoring rhythm and flow. So when we are in a stressed mode, which many of us, well, we all know stress to one extent or another, whether we're kind of locked into it on an ongoing basis or whether we, uh, like most of us, kind of go in and out of stress. But the effect of stress is that our nervous system gets a little bit pumped up and we tend to kind of hit this wall of, of tension in our bodies and it feels like we're out of rhythm or out of flow with life, right? And you've probably had that experience where everything you do just seems to kind of, you meet a brick wall. And if we can restore the rhythm in our bodies, it helps to restore the rhythm and the flow in our nervous systems. And it's kind of like a reset button. So what I'd like to do today to start out with is to teach you a very, very simple um, exercise that you can do anywhere and it helps to restore the rhythm and the flow in your body and your nervous system. And it does this with bilateral tapping and bilateral movements. So movements that go from one side of the body to the other, which we do quite a lot of in yoga are being shown to have a, a profound effect on relaxing the nervous system and the body and pulling us out of that stress mode and back into a more um, modulated kind of place where we like to hang out. Right? So, um, so walking is a great example of bilateral movement, right? We're, we're moving from one side to the other. And aside from just being outside and getting exercise, it's that bilateral movement that also helps to restore us to a place of feeling good, feeling safe in our bodies. So the exercise that I want to start with today, like I said, it's super simple. Um, and it helps to connect the right and left sides of the brain, which get discombobulated during stress or of course, in trauma, which is the um, sort of the, the epitome of, of a stress response in the body. So what you're going to do for this exercise is you're going to cross your hands like so and bring your thumbs together. So it kind of confuses your brain because the left is on the right and the right is on the left now. And you want to have your fingertips pointing as upright as possible. So not so much to the sides, but sort of on an angle upwards towards your um, face. And then you're going to locate your collarbones, which are just at the top of your chest here, the front of your shoulders, and you're gonna bring your fingertips just below your collarbones. So this is called the butterfly hug. And it's, um, it comes from a, um, a system of therapy called EMDR. And it's, um, it's, a, it's really about restoring rhythm and flow in the body. So the way it works is we're going to lift one hand, just the, the fingers and tap, and then the other side. So you're tapping, one side and the other, and that's it. That's as simple as it is. Just tapping here. You can close your eyes if you like. And just let your body absorb that sense of being touched as well as the rhythm of this movement. And then just allow that to drop off and you can release your hands and pause for a moment and, and tune in and notice. So what do you feel now? Whenever I do that, I feel really warm. My hands are often warm and sitting on my chest there, it sort of brings this warmth and flow to my whole body. So I invite you to just notice what's true for you. And if you don't notice much at all, that's totally fine. And I'm gonna grab my chair 
Uh, my cat is sleeping on it, so I'm going to have to uh, <laughs> relocate him, and then I'll I'll see you on the chair. Hmm. He wasn't so impressed <laughs> with me. <laughs> So as I mentioned, that butterfly hug is something that you can do anytime. So if you're feeling just even a little bit off or a little bit uh, stressed out, I invite you to just give that a try and, and see what happens for you, right? Maybe very subtle, maybe profound, maybe nothing at all, but it's, uh, it's a tool of many that we can pull out um, when we need it. So let's start a little bit of rhythmic movement and we're always kind of coordinating rhythmic movement, maybe adding breath in, and all of that helps to restore this nervous system baseline of, of relaxed response. So this cat-cow movement where we inhale and lift the heart and create a bit of arch in the back, and then the exhale, we round, let the head relax, the shoulders relax, so inhaling. And whenever I offer suggestions to coordinate breath and movement, they're always just suggestions. Right? So you can just do the movement and breathe in whatever way is comfortable, or if it feels good, you can coordinate the breath and movement together. Sometimes it's actually stressful to juggle too many balls at once, right? So if you just wanna do the movement and focus on that, how, how that feels in your body, then great. Find your own natural rhythm. So it's not about following exactly the pace that I'm going, but finding the rhythm that feels comfortable, that feels good to you. And then finding your way back to a neutral spine. So you're sitting upright, relaxed, but upright, not slumping, ideally. And this next one, again, it's working with the two sides of the body, which helps to coordinate both sides of the brain, the logical and the more feeling or intuitive side. And so here we're going to take one hand and we're going to use our eyes as well and look out to that hand. And then bring the hand as you watch your hand, you're gonna bring it across your body to the opposite shoulder. If it feels comfortable, you can look down at your hand to give your neck a little stretch there. And then you'll open it out, following again with your eyes. Now we're bringing the gaze into it. I invite you to just let your breath be natural and normal, its own normal rhythm and flow here without trying to manipulate it in any way. You're just watching your hand following it as it crosses your body. If you like, you can pause for a moment. As the hand comes to the shoulder, let your neck have a little bit of a stretch and then follow it back out. Okay, we'll make this the last one on this side. So you're coming across to your shoulder and then releasing. And then when you're ready, same thing on the other side. So you're holding out the hand, looking toward your hand, following it with your gaze, bringing your hand across to the opposite side of your body. Maybe pause for a moment and then open again. So we're engaging lots of different parts of our brain that are required for movement, for where we're looking. And when our brain is engaged in what we're doing, or our mind is engaged in what we're doing, it's less likely to go wandering off to places of stress. Following your gaze, maybe pausing each time your hand comes to your shoulder, as long as that feels comfortable. Okay, 
Okay, let's make this the last one. So as you come across this time, pausing and then releasing. And then it's always nice to come back to something symmetrical in between. So this time we'll raise the arms up. You can bend them so they're comfortable or straight if that feels good. And then you're gonna add a forward bend. So you'll let your body come forward over your legs. Hands can rest on your thighs and you'll come back up again. If you wanna coordinate breathing here with the movement, you would inhale as you lift. Exhale as you go forward, that's totally optional. Of course, you still need to breathe. Now, if it feels good for you to stay in that forward bend, go ahead and stay a few breaths. If it feels better to keep moving, you can go ahead and keep moving. And when you're staying, it could be your hands or your forearms resting on your legs, or you might even relax forward so that your arms hang down if you're in a chair or hands come to the ground. Chest a little closer to, or even resting on your thighs. When you're ready to come up, can support yourselves with your hands on your legs if that feels right for you and come upright. So we'll add a twist, which is again, working with the two sides of the brain and the body and coming into that rhythmic motion. You can coordinate the breath here or not as you like. So if you're coordinating breath, you're gonna lift your arms as you inhale, otherwise just lift your arms and then both hands to one thigh or to the chair or floor with the back hand and then coming up with the breath in exhaling gently twisting the other way try to keep your spine long and it's not about twisting as far as you can or forcing yourself by putting leverage against your body but just finding a nice easy rhythm right all day long the spine is moving forward it's moving back it's twisting it's side bending and when we find a nice easeful rhythm in our practice, our body gets used to that movement. So it's more likely to accept it when we're doing something more strenuous later on. So breathing in center, breathing out to the side, very gentle. It's amazing how much subtle work has a profound effect. Right? It doesn't need to be forceful or big movements. All right now, choose a side and stay for a few breaths. You're just resting your hand on your leg. The other hand can be on the, on the back of the thigh somewhere, on the floor, or on the chair. Lifting the spine tall with each breath in. And as you exhale, maybe turn your head behind you to look toward your back shoulder, only if that's comfortable for your neck. Chin slightly down and breathing here. Notice what you feel in your body. Where do you feel restriction? Where do you feel ease? Come back, lifting up to the center and then over to the other side, same thing. So just resting the hands for a little bit of support, turning your head, maybe lowering the chin down and breathing and noticing what you feel as you breathe. Right, returning to center, lifting the arms up and then releasing the hands back to the thighs. And we'll go back to that cat-cow movement. So inhale, arching, exhale, rounding. Always tuning in to see if breathing in your own rhythm, your own natural rhythm would feel more comfortable than breathing with the movement. Great. And then come back to find a nice comfortable seat. 
And we'll look a little bit at this area of the body, the jaw, the neck, the shoulders. For me, and I don't know about you, but this is an area where I often find myself holding tension. So I'll, I'll notice my jaw is clenched or my shoulders are pulled up a little bit. And so, and this isn't so uncommon, right? It may not be your very favorite place to hold tension, but it's quite a common one. So imagine at the crown of your head, a little string drawing you up towards the sky. And at the same time, allow your shoulders to drop down with gravity toward the earth. Feel your neck grow long and simply notice, be aware of this area. Notice the back of your shoulders, the tops of your shoulders, the front of your shoulders, all around the neck, the jaw, even the face muscles. So here we can start to restore some flow and rhythm in our bodies by bringing in tension to allow us to really feel what it feels like to tense and then relax and soften. So let's start by bringing the shoulders up and squeezing up and in. Really bring some tension into your shoulders. And then as you exhale, shoulders release. So again, you can breathe in as you lift if you like and exhale with a sigh. And when we actually make sound and open our mouths, it's another big release for the nervous system. So inhale up, squeezing, exhale, release. And if you want to even bring the arms and hands in it, into it, you can squeeze your hands, squeeze your arms, squeeze your shoulders, breathe in. And ah, relax. Let's do that once more. And then this time, gently clench, clench your jaw and squeeze your face as you do this. So hands, arms, shoulders, jaw, face. Breath in, exhale. Relax. We'll do that two more times. Hands, arms, shoulders, neck, jaw, face. Breathe in. And relax. One more time. Great. And again, let's pause for a moment and tune in. So what do you notice now? And it doesn't have to be anything profound. Maybe you notice and are aware of more tension, maybe less tension, maybe just some sensation of warmth or tingling. So I invite you to, to simply notice what's present right now without judgment. What are you aware of? What do you feel? For me, I noticed that I'm drawn to my hands. That squeezing really woke up some sensation in my hands. So I'm drawn there. That's where my attention is. So notice what's true for you. Maybe similar, maybe totally different. So you can... Come back to a nice centered position. Maybe if you're in a chair, you might want to take your feet a little bit wider so you've got a good solid base of support. And we'll bring in the rhythm of circle. So little circles, moving your whole torso. Feeling your weight shift from sit bone to sit bone as you circle around. If you like, you can have your eyes closed. And again, tune into sensation. When we tune into our bodies, and we've been working with this this whole session, when we tune into sensation, it helps to bring our attention into the present moment. If we can only feel what we're feeling right now, really truly feel. Circle the other way as well and notice what shifts, what changes, what do you feel differently, what different sensations arise. Wonderful. And then let's come back to the center. Bringing the hands up. We'll do some circles with the wrists. Again, restoring rhythms through circling. And the other benefit of circling the joints is it brings 
uh, lubrication to the joints. Synovial fluid needs movement to flow. And so if the joints feel creaky and, and maybe even a little sore when you move them, especially if there's arthritis present, we tend to want to not move them and that makes the situation worse. Right? So rhythm and flow go together right, to bring, literally bring fluid to the joints. Great. Try the same thing with your hands in gentle fists and notice how that may or may not change the sensations that you experience. Notice if you're holding your breath, that is the biggest flow and rhythm that's with us all the time. Yet when we get stressed, what we do first is we hold the breath, right? So if we can notice that and just restore the rhythm to the breath, that can bring us back down really quickly. Give your hands a little shake. Maybe even shake them up a little. Your wrists be floppy, shake them up to the sides, keep your shoulders and elbows relaxed. Right? And then make your hands into fists and tilt the fists down toward the ground as you slowly bring your wrists toward your shoulders. And then as you push away, open your hands. And as if you're pushing away two walls, very slowly, because this can be quite an intense stretch, even though it looks simple. Fists turn down. Elbows bend, hands come toward your shoulders, and then pushing out. Good, a couple more like that. Again, check in that you're breathing. Good, and then let the arms out to the side, the hands just flop, you can give them a little shake here. And as you slowly shake, also slowly lower down. If you're in a chair and your arms can hang, let them hang. If, if they're touching the floor because you're sitting on the floor, that's fine. Just let them come fingertips to the floor. And notice again, you can close your eyes if you like. Notice the arms, the shoulders, the wrists and the hands and what's present, what you're aware of there. I always want to remind you that sometimes you may not feel any sensation. You may feel a little bit numbed out or a little bit divorced from your own body and know that that's really normal especially with stress right different parts of the brain light up different parts of the brain shut down but even if we're not stressed it's very easy to lose kind of contact with parts of the body lose sensation Great, let's come back to the breath you can let your hands rest wherever they're comfortable now come back to your breath Let's see if you can tune into and notice your own natural rhythm and flow without movement, without following anybody else's flow or rhythm. Just finding your own. Feel the nourishment of the inhale, the softening of the exhale. And our breath itself has this incredible ability to restore our nervous systems, maybe more than anything else in our bodies. And when our nervous systems are in a relaxed place, there's this phenomenon called heart rate variability, which is really important for our ongoing good health. And it means that the heart rate goes a little bit faster when we breathe in, it goes a little bit slower when we breathe out, it's probably not perceptible to you. But when we're in a relaxed state, that is normal, it's natural. And when there's heart rate variability, our system is responding to the excitement of the inhale, right? the stimulation of the inhale and the relaxation of the exhale. And so our heart rate goes up a little bit, goes down a little bit. And as you know, when you're stressed or you're frightened or you're, um, you know, you've got adrenaline pumping through your system, your heart is going boom, 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 boom. It has no care what your breath is doing, right? So restoring our rhythm and our balance is coming back to that place of natural heart rate variability. So let's tune in for a few more breaths here. And then I'm going to invite you to come to a standing position. So if you're down on the floor and it takes you a moment to, to get organized to stand up, take your time and we'll come to a standing position. 
<clears throat> if you have a chair and we are going to work a little bit with um, some movements that invite us to balance a bit. So you might want to keep the chair handy. So then as you come to this standing position, we'll start with mountain pose, really feeling our bodies in this position now, putting a little bit of weight into your heels. Feeling your shoulders move away from your ears as the crown of your head reaches up towards the sky and your heels drop deep into the earth. Now, if you're someone who likes to visualize and it helps you to, to feel more grounded by visualizing, you can imagine roots going down from your heels into the earth. as if those roots could reach right to the center of the earth and give you a deep, deep anchor, knowing you're held and supported by the earth. And then we're going to start to gently rock the weight to one side and to the other. Keep breathing. You can have your eyes open or closed here. Generally, the recommendation when you're standing is to have the eyes open so that you're visually oriented, so that you're not losing your balance. But if you feel comfortable with your eyes closed, that's also fine. So you're just rocking your weight side to side. And then if it feels right for you, you can start to lift the heel on one side, bending the knee, coming onto the toes, lifting the heel of the other side and rocking as you do that. As babies, the most soothing thing we can do is be rocked or have done to us is to be rocked. And that is no different at all for adults. Right? That part of our nervous system is hardwired and that rocking is soothing for adults too. And maybe you've done this when you've been upset, found yourself rocking in place or going for a walk. And it's all of those things that help to restore our rhythm and flow and bring us back to a place of ease. So if you like, and this feels good, you can then start to lift your whole foot off the ground. So again, make sure you're breathing. So you're just walking on the spot, but kind of marching in slow motion on the spot. And then if you want to give yourself more of a challenge, swing the arm. So the leg that's forward, the arm goes back. The leg that's on the ground, the arm goes forward. And you might find it surprisingly challenging to coordinate all of this, even though if we're not thinking about it, walking down the road, it happens quite naturally. And again, keep breathing. <laughs> Great. And then let's come back to a comfortable standing position. We'll take the feet now a little bit apart. You can bring your hands to your hips. And again, now working on the joints of the hips in that slow circling movement to restore some lubrication to the hip joints. You might notice some creaking. My hips often crack when I do this. It's not painful. And that's the thing you're looking for. Little noises, pops and cracks are not, uh, not an issue, but if it's uncomfortable or painful, then you definitely want to figure out what's going on there. Maybe you already know what's going on there and you can modify your movements, make them smaller, just dip into where it feels maybe a little uncomfortable as long as it's not actually painful, right? So sometimes a stretch feeling can be a little bit uncomfortable, but it feels good right, to release those muscles. Great. So if you've gone both ways, come back to the center. Okay. And keeping the feet a little bit wider, again, we're going to go for that cross body movement in rhythm. And you can do this just standing here upright. You can do it 
um, using your chair for support. So I'll show you both ways, starting without the chair. So we'll take the arms to the sides, soften your knees, and as you come across your body, you're gonna bring your hand to your opposite leg. The other hand just comes to your low back or hip behind you. And then come back to the center and twist the other way. So you wanna make contact, your hands touch your body. Come back to center. And then if you want, you can add a forward bend. So you can reach a little lower on your leg or if you've got a chair and you wanna go there, you can reach towards your chair, either the seat or the top of the chair. And so a few more like that. If you're coordinating breathing, inhale up, exhale to the side. Many of you are probably doing that already because you're so used to this movement, but if you're a little bit new to it or it's not quite ingrained and it feels good to you, exhale as you twist, inhale to center. One more to each side. All right, and then we'll come back to the center. Put your arms all the way up. Good. And then bend both your knees, bring your hands onto your thighs, and then slide down so your elbows are on your thighs. As long as that's comfortable, you can stay with your hands on your legs if you prefer. And then for those of you who want a little more stretch and it feels okay, you can let the head release completely, let the arms hang down or even cross your arms and hold opposite elbows. So find a comfortable position here. It might be hands on a chair to support you. Take a couple more breaths here. Remember always, if you have any issues with pressure, blood pressure, eye pressure, ear pressure, sinus pressure, you want to keep your head above your heart so you'd be more upright. Otherwise, you can let the head release as long as you're comfortable here. When you're ready, we'll come up with the breath in, slowly reaching overhead and exhaling to release, coming back bring the feet together to come to mountain pose. Great. So I mentioned earlier, the spine is always moving forward, back, side to side, twisting. It's part of our everyday life. Right? And if we can bring some suppleness to the spine through our practice, when we do something a little more strenuous later, our body's kind of conditioned for that. So we're gonna work with a bit of a side bend now. You can take the feet a little bit apart. And again, we're gonna keep with that rhythmic movement. So we'll do one side, actually we'll do the sides alternating. So here reaching up with one arm and then reaching over to the side and then coming up, switching arms and over to the other side. So it's sort of a little bit of a, a half windmill from side to side. You don't worry about how you're breathing here. Just keep breathing and feel that gentle, rhythmic flow in your body. You're not following my timing, but your own. Right? What feels right for you? Or if you're in the same room as someone, following your own. Although the interesting thing is one of the things that also is so good for us in community is moving together. So soldiers marching together gives a sense of community, support, care. But when we're trying to find our own rhythm, sometimes we can get caught up in what we think we should be doing because someone else is doing it that way. So let's come back to the center now, releasing both arms. And here you can use your legs for support. I'm gonna use a chair here, seat of the chair to come back to a kind of a cat cow movement for the spine. So if you're, if you don't have a chair handy and realizing wearing black isn't the best against this black background, you can bring your hands to your knees and arch and round, or you can bring your hands to a chair. So you want 
If you're using a chair, you want to line up your shoulders over your wrists, your feet underneath your hips, soft bent knees either way. And we'll inhale and find a little lift in the tail and the heart. And then exhale and round. Follow your own rhythm again. If coordinating the breath feels like it's not working for you or it creates stress trying to bring everything together, just do the movement. Your body will thank you. Let the breath just be normal. Right? When we try to manipulate the breath and it creates stress and tension, it actually stimulates the nervous system in a way that, that can be stressful. Great, from here, whether your hands are on the chair or on your legs, we'll lift, taking the arms overhead, and then coming down to release. Okay. <clears throat> so the next one is a little bit of shaking. So we've been talking about restoring rhythms and bilateral movements and rocking. And shaking is another way that we kind of let go of tension. And I sort of think of it as, you know, shaking, shaking something to, to level it out, like a, a pan of sand. If it's in a hill and you shake it, it's going to level out. So we're just bringing everything kind of down in our system. So you can rock on your feet and let your arms hang and just let your body shake. Maybe it's bending and moving at the knees or rocking up and down from the feet. Just find a little shake. You can shake a lot or shake a little. Maybe your head goes, just be careful with your neck. Don't fling it around too much. And then blah, shake it all out. <laughs> and then pause and notice what you feel now. What are you aware of in your body as you come to stillness after shaking? And again, it could be quite different for everybody who does this. I feel a lot of tingling through my whole body right now. Hmm. All right. So we're going to next make our way down to the ground. So take your time. You're going to come down onto your back. If you like, you can use a blanket or a cushion to give yourself a little bit of a pillow. And that's especially helpful if when you lie down, your chin is up higher than your forehead, which is a bit of hyperextension of the neck. So you want to have the neck nice and comfortable with its natural curve, which is a little bit of extension, naturally. So here again, we'll work with the breath to begin with. So you can have your knees bent or straight, whatever's comfortable for you. Hands might rest on the body or on the ground. And just as you come to this position, taking a moment to come back to the basics. Feel your body. Feel the pressure of your body against the ground. And then feel the movement of your breath in your body. There's no need to change anything. Tuning into and observing your breath. Do a very gentle movement now that works with the arms, legs, the neck a little bit. And also, you can coordinate this with the breath, but as always, it's not a requirement. We're going to take 
one arm and one leg on the same thigh and reach them away from each other. Now the arm can rest on the ground behind you or out to the side. The main thing is that your shoulder's happy. And then once you get to that position, you'll turn your head away from your arm. Take a breath there and then turn your head back to center and bring the arm and leg back to where they started. So you'll, you'll probably wanna start this with both knees bent just to make it uh, make sense. And then other arm and leg reaching away from each other. Again, adjust your arms so that it's super comfortable and then turn your head away from the arm that's lifted. Take a breath there. Head to center and then arm and leg move. So let's go back to the first side, stretching out, turning the head, pausing for a breath, turning the head back, and then back to where you started. Other side, reaching out, turning the head away, back to center, and back to where you started. So we're gonna switch it up now. So we're doing opposite arm and leg. So it doesn't matter which side you start with. So if it's your right arm, it'll be your left leg. Reaching out with those limbs. And then again, turn your head away from your arm for a breath. Back to center. And now as you bring the leg and arm in, you're going to touch your hand to your knee and then release. Other side, opposite arm. So now if it's left leg or left arm, right leg or vice versa, turn your head away for a breath. And then as you bring them towards each other, you're going to touch your hand to your knee, opposite knee and release. So let's do each side one more time. So stretching out, opposite arm and leg, turning your head away for a breath. Back to center, touching the hand to the knee and releasing. Other side, reaching out, turning your head, pause for a breath. Turning your head back and then hand to knee and release. Okay. Let's take the arms to the sides now. You can have the elbows bent. You want to, as you bring the arms to the side, see if you can have the hands, back of the hands and the elbows on the ground. So somewhere up to the side, maybe bent, whatever's comfortable. We'll take a breath in here. And as you start to exhale, lift the arms towards each other, cross them over your body with one arm closer to your face and give yourself a hug. Notice which arm is on top and we'll open the arms again. Taking a breath in. As you start to exhale, lift the arms, cross them over the other arm on top now. As you finish your exhale, hands to the shoulders, take a couple of breaths here. And then reaching the arms open again. Okay. And then taking the hands down toward the knees, lift the knees towards your body. And let's do this simple movement where the knees come forward and move away. If you want to coordinate breathing here, again, finding your own easeful rhythm. But the breath here would be inhale as the knees go away, exhale as they come in. Let your feet release to the floor now. 
arms a little bit away from the body, just out to the sides. And we'll rock in a few inches with the knees either way. So we're just rocking a little bit across the back of the sacrum. Again, another thing that's soothing to babies that doesn't change as we get older is a feeling of, of pressure on the sacrum. So right, you're holding a baby, tapping on the back of its back of its body on the on the uh, sacrum, which is the back of the hips, often very very soothing. So just that little bit of a rocking motion. It's not really a, a, a twist yet. We're just shifting the weight from one side to the other, massaging that lower part of the spine with the spine through the the from the neck down to the back of the waist, these little vertebrae that stack. And then when we get to the sacrum, it's five bones that are fused together and they flatten out and create this shape. Now, for some of you, this rocking may feel a little bit like a, there's a lot of pressure and you may find that you wanna have more padding under you depending on how your sacrum is shaped. For others, it may feel really good and really soothing. So you're just gonna modify as you need to. And then, in time, if it feels good, you can add a twist. So you're going to let your knees go further to the side, maybe even turn your head the other way for a more full twist. And then everything comes back to center and going the other way. So tune in really to your body to know how far to go, right? You might just go part way to the ground. You might go all the way to the ground really depending on what your hips and your spine have to say. Great. As you come back to the center, We'll bring one knee into the chest and bring your hands around that knee. You can stretch the other leg straight out or leave it bent. So again, whatever's comfortable for you. And again, going into that rhythmic side to side movement, we're gonna let the knee fall into, gently fall into one hand and then pass it to the other hand. You can bring a little bit across your body Finding your own rhythm here, knee into one hand, knee into the other hand. Don't worry about how you're breathing, just keep breathing. You can either stay with this gentle movement if it feels good to you, or if you want a deeper twist now and it would feel good to you, as you bring your hand to the opposite knee, you can bring that knee across the body a little more and roll onto your hip. Don't worry about the shoulder lifting. It can lift or it can stay down, whatever works for you. If you want a little more stretch, raise the arm along the ground. And if you feel like your shoulder wants a little more support, you can even bend your elbow and let your hand rest on your waist or your hip and that will relieve some of the tension on your shoulder. If you've come into the twist, you'll come back to the center. If you've been moving, you'll also come back to the center. Bring both feet to the ground now. Lift both hips up a few inches and then bring them back down in a way that feels comfortable and aligned. And then we'll bring the opposite knee in, so the one that we weren't just working with. The other leg can stay bent or can straighten as feels good for you. And then again, start with a little movement to check in, side to side, making the movements bigger if it feels good to you. And then eventually you can decide, do I want to keep this nice rhythmic rocking movement? If it's feeling really good, and especially if your hips are feeling tight, this might 
Just be the ticket to loosen them up a bit by continuing with the movement. And if you're craving a deeper twist, as the knee comes into the hand opposite side, you can roll onto that side. The leg can, the foot can rest on your other leg. It can come across your body. You can support it with your hand. Just whatever feels right. And again, honor the opposite shoulder. So it's getting often quite a bit of stretch. Bring it down for less stretch. Even bring your hand to your waist. Move it higher for more stretch if that's what's required for you today. And when you're ready, you make your way back onto your back, bringing again, both feet to the floor. Again, you're gonna probably wanna lift your hips up to find center again, so lifting up and then slowly releasing the hips down and bringing the knees in toward your body. Again, you can repeat that forward and back movement to restore equilibrium into the spine that we've just been twisting. So we're gonna bring it back into its neutral alignment. And then if it feels comfortable to you, you can raise your legs toward the ceiling. Keep a little bend in your knees so there's little effort. Raise your arms. You can circle the wrists and circle the ankles. One way and the other. Any which way feels good. And then again, give a little shake. Knees back into the chest. Give yourself a, a comfortable squeeze. If it's not comfortable, don't do it. Maybe a little side to side movement. When we bring the knees closer to the chest, as opposed to rocking with the feet on the floor, we move that massage a little bit up into the lower back area more so than the sacrum. And again, really depends how your spine is shaped. So if your spine is a little bonier and there's less uh, musculature or flesh around the spine, it may not feel so comfortable to rock on it, right? So honoring the messages from your body, only doing what feels good. And then as you're ready, you can release your feet to the floor. Check in with your body. Is there anything else that it would appreciate to do before we come into some moments of quiet for Shavasana? If you want to stretch or squeeze your knees in again or do any other movement, take your time to do that now. And then you're going to find a comfortable position, generally lying down, but you can sit if you prefer, where you can be really relaxed and comfortable for a few minutes. And generally, you're going to uh, make sure that you are warm enough. Big, um, big help in being able to relax. So take a minute or two, get yourselves comfortable, get ready for Shavasana. And I'll break. You are always welcome to sit if you like for Shavasana. Some people find that it keeps them more alert and that's what they need. Uh, most people find that, that relaxation is more key and so lying down often facilitates that. Gradually, as you find that comfortable position, really feel yourself being supported as you let go of movement. 
and allow the ground to cradle your body. Let it support you. So many systems of our body are always flowing beneath the surface, even when we're not aware of it, which is most of the time. Right? We're often aware of our breath or even our heartbeat, which are two of the sort of more obvious systems of rhythm in our bodies. But there are many more. There's a rhythm to all of our organs. There's a rhythm to our nervous system. There's a rhythm to all of the fluids in the body. And largely we're completely unaware of these rhythms. When we're in a, a good state of ease in our bodies, it gives the maximum support to all these systems to come into their own natural flow and rhythm, their own natural health and ease. And so for me, this time of Shavasana where we really let go and allow the work that we've done to integrate into our systems is key to the practice. If we just do all the work and then we'll go back to our busy lives, we can really lose that sense of completion. <clears throat> so as you trust your body to do its work, to find its way to health and ease, let your body be supported. Let go of whatever control you feel you need to have in daily life. See if you can surrender to this moment entirely. Surrender to the natural flow of your breath. Let it be as it is. whether it's short and shallow, long and deep, as long as it's your natural flow, let it be. And sometimes it's hard to not control the breath when we bring our attention to it. So if you find yourself controlling your breath, just allow that to, it's all good, it's all okay. As you breathe, imagine your body with each exhalation sinking down into the cradle of the earth. Feel the muscles, the large skeletal muscles soften, your arms, your legs, your core, shoulders and hips releasing. With each exhalation, let go a little more. Check in with your jaw, your face, your neck, shoulders, and arms. And you find a little more ease there. Let your fingers go, let your hands go. Feel the weight of your pelvis drop down. Feel all the muscles around your hips and buttocks soften. You feel that your legs then follow. Follow the example of your hips. And they soften and drop right to your toes. Letting go. Letting go as much as possible. The more we can restore this sense of ease into our bodies, the more we allow the natural wisdom of our bodies to take over and heal ourselves. If nobody can heal us, no drug can heal us. 
we need to create the conditions for healing within our bodies. That doesn't mean that drugs are not helpful in healing to help restore some equilibrium, but it's our body's natural wisdom that does the healing. Our body's immune systems, our ability to repair and heal that does the work in the end of the day. Today I'd like to share with you a small portion of a, a much longer chant and it talks about the rhythms of nature, the rhythms of the moon, the tides, the stars, the rhythm of fire, the sun, and how all those rhythms have their own pace and when we can tune ourselves into the rhythms of the world we understand that our own rhythms have their own pace. And when we try to control everything, actually stop it from having its own flow and rhythm within us and all around us. Oh, Pushkabam Prajavan Pashuman Bhavati Chandra Mava Apam Pushkam Pushkabam Prajavan Pashuman Bhavati Ya evam veda yo pamayatanam veda ayatanavan bhavati agnirva apamayatanam ayatanavan bhavati Yoknir ayatanam veda ayatanavan bhavati apova agnir ayatanam ayatanavan bhavati ya you're ready and you don't have to be, you can stay longer in Shavasana if that feels right for you. If you're ready, start to deepen your breath a little bit. <clears throat> Just bring a little more life and energy into your breath. Gradually start to bring a bit of movement, wiggle your fingers and toes. Stretch out any way that would feel good. Again, finding your own rhythm, your own timing, rolling onto your side as you're ready. Eventually making your way upright. It's so interesting. I obviously I'm watching myself right now and I'm watching how I'm rocking <laughs> and how often when I'm standing or sitting, I'm actually rocking. And that is such a natural way that we self soothe, right? Without even really realizing it. So when you catch yourself doing that, don't stop yourself, right? Find those rhythmic movements that help to restore balance. Um, you can use this butterfly hug that we uh, looked at earlier in the class going for a walk, 
um, any of those rhythmic movements, especially bilateral movements where you're moving one side of the body just, and the other. Just winding down, I think. You're not muted, Tian, just to let you know. I'll start so moving your hands together. Okay. Am I supposed to be? Oh, yes. sorry. <coughs> sorry about that, everyone. Sometimes the Zoom room is uh, a little bit, uh, we're, we're not sure where we are in the Zoom room. So. Hmm. so taking this theme with you through your week, finding ways to soothe your nervous system through those movements, through your breath, through awareness. Have a beautiful, beautiful week. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.